Hello, welcome back to my channel. And welcome to the second episode of Taste Test here on my channel. Super excited once again to be doing this type of video. As you can see by the title, I'm going to be reading some of Gabby Reed's favorite books. And can I just say thank you guys so much for your recommendations for people to feature in these videos because prior to my last Taste Test video, I didn't know about Gabby's channel. And now I do. Now I watch every video. I love her channel. And it's wild to me that I didn't watch her before because our tastes are so similar in books. So I'm really glad you guys recommended her because A, I like her videos and I have a new person to watch and then B, I'm excited to kind of read some more of her choices that aren't necessarily things that I have read before. So a lot of our tastes I would say overlap in the romance category. I watched one of her videos that was her all-time favorite romances and I think I had only not read like one or two of the books. So that was super cool but also made picking these books a little bit more difficult because even though she loves adult romance like I do, I've read a lot of her choices so I have some other stuff here. Some stuff that is not adult romance. All of that to say, I know there's a lot of rambling. I have all of my books picked out from various videos that she's done. So I'll show you guys what I selected. I think I did a pretty good job at kind of narrowing her taste down. I'm not sure if these are all all-time favorites for her, but I think it does do a pretty good job at like summarizing her taste. And um, yeah, we can see if our tastes line up. So the first book that I got from her recommendation was from her best books of 2019 video. It looks like this. And I picked The Silent Patient by Alex Michaelides. This is a thriller. I know that Gabby reads a fair amount of thrillers. She said she really, really enjoyed this book and this book was already on my radar so I decided to pick it up. I don't know much about it. I think it's about a woman who is hospitalized for some reason, some sort of like psychological reason, and she's silent. I know, wild. I could be totally off base <laughs> with what this book's about but we'll find out when we read it. The next book recommendation that I took from Gabby was from her favorite YA contemporaries video and I picked We Are the Ants by Sean David Hutchinson. This is another book that's I feel like pretty widely talked about on YouTube. Seems like Gabby really likes this one. I don't know much about it. I just know that it's sort of an apocalyptic situation or like aliens are coming. I can't quite remember and I don't quite know, but we're gonna figure it out when we read this book. From her Best Books of 2018 video, I picked up The Humans by Matt Haig. This is a book that has been on my radar for a while, but isn't something that I would normally pick up. I don't pick up a lot of adult fiction or a lot of adult literary fiction, and I think that's probably the place where me and Gabby's taste diverge the most. So it'd be interesting to try this out. I'm not opposed necessarily to adult fiction. It's just not something that I tend to reach for a ton. It seems to be a bit more expansive of a genre. I mean, because there's so many subgenres within adult fiction that I just feel like I'm not kept abreast of what is coming out. So I'm excited to give this one a try. This has gotten pretty good reviews since coming out. So I mean, good. I, I think it's supposed to talk a lot about like the human condition. And I think this also might be a kind of an apocalyptic story, but I, I'm not quite sure. Don't, don't quote me on that. We'll figure it out. The next book is the last one that I own physically, and it is All the Ugly and Wonderful Things by Bryn Greenwood. And I actually found this on Gabby's Goodreads shelf, which I thought would be kind of a fun place to look, and she has it on her all-time favorite shelf. This is interesting to me because this is supposed to be sort of a controversial pick. It is about a young girl who gets in a relationship with a man that's much older than her. It's kind of problematic, but I've heard that, I don't know, it's a very divisive pick. Some people love it, some people hate it. Very interested to try this. This is another adult literary fiction pick. And then, of course, I couldn't not do a romance because Gabby reads romance and so do I. So I picked one from her all-time favorite romances video, and it's a book that I haven't read. It was one of the few that I hadn't read, and it is Junkie by Cambria Hebert. This I'm really interested in. It is a male-male romance. I don't know much about the plot. I kind of don't want to know too much going in, but I'm excited to give this one a try. It has really good reviews on Goodreads. I've seen it before, although like I said, I, I didn't really know what it was about previously. So yeah, those are the five books that I'm going to be reading and trying to see if me and Gabby's tastes align. <laughs> so let's get into it. So I just got back from work. My cat shit on my rug and I'm not even upset about it because this book is just so fucking good. I just got done actually reading a book that I absolutely loathed and then I read half of a different male male romance and I was just feeling sort of slumpy I guess you could say. I mean I never really get in true reading slumps because like I just force myself to read. This book is <clears throat> life-changing and so good and just fucking everything that I would ever want in a romance. I am so glad I picked this one up. Gabby, you have amazing taste, and if this is any indication for the rest of the video, I think I'm in for a real fucking treat. Wow, okay, so let me try to describe this book. I'm 60% into it. I did not intend to get 60% into it before I updated you guys, but I started it at work and I got 60% into it because I was just that excited. This book is about a guy named Drew and Trent. I think that's their names. Let me Drew and Trent. <laughs> Drew is a kind of indie race car driver. He does like off-roading sort of 
he, he's a bad boy, right? Okay. And then he, for some fucking reason, which we don't get a lot of backstory into, is friends with a football player and frat president named Trent. And they've been uh, best friends for a while. They end up becoming romantically involved, right? There's more to it than that. But the tropes that are used in this book, the way that the author was able to put things together so seamlessly, I'm at a loss for words, truly. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me try to lay it out. So in the introduction, basically, in the prologue, I was instantly hooked. I was like, I want them to get together. They need to be together. It's hard to do friends to lovers well, but I think Cambria Hebert, bitch, you really know what the fuck you were doing. We've got a shared bed situation, kind of. I don't actually think they should. Did they share the bed? Yes, there was a shared bed situation in the prologue. There's like the sick trope, you know, taking care of your significant other when they're sick. There's like jealousy, but like cute jealousy, not like gross jealousy. It's like, I didn't know I was into you and I don't want anyone else to have you sort of. Oh my God, it's so good. It's so good. It's so good. If there's one book that I like from this vlog, I'm, I'm happy because I needed this. I have not read a romance that I felt this strongly about in so long. But anyway, I'll update you guys when I'm finished but I'm pretty sure this is gonna be five stars. Okay, editing Chan here. I realized that I never gave you guys a final update on Junkie by Cambria Hubert. I fucking love this book. Everything that I said in the previous clips holds true and I think holds even more true now because I just, I love this so much. Definitely my favorite male-male romance of the year. Definitely one of my favorite friends to lovers romances. It did all of the tropes perfectly. Oh, I just like, I can't put into words how much I adored this book. If you guys take away one thing from this video, it is to go pick up Junkie. I also like that it's a series. I don't know about you guys, but I really like series, like romance series where there's like a couple of books about one couple and then any side characters kind of get their own books throughout the series. I think it just it makes you feel at home because you know the characters, you know what to expect, you're rooting for their love story. So I'm really excited to read the rest of the books in the series. I think there's like seven or eight of them. So yeah, uh, that's pretty much all I have to say about this book. I just I adore it. Had to tell you guys final update on it because it was so good. Okay, so I am about 50% into the audiobook of The Humans. I feel like I probably should have updated you guys earlier than this, but I've just been listening to it in my car on my commute, and it's been really good. I was kind of hesitant to start it because I don't normally reach for things that seem to be philosophical, and I don't want to say there's a reason for that, but uh, sometimes I just don't want to think about the vastness of the human experience, so I was sort of hesitant, like I said, to pick up this book. But I'm enjoying it. It is taking a pretty lighthearted approach to the subject matter. I mean, basically it's like a body snatchers type of book. The main character, I think his name is, is it Andrew? I'm not sure. Basically this alien is sent to earth in the body of a mathematician. He knows nothing of the mathematician's like life. Like a 40 year old man, he's married and has a child. It's, it's about this alien trying to navigate the human world, trying to figure things out. And he was sent there on a mission basically to destroy this hypothesis, this mathematical hypothesis that the mathematician had solved. But the more time that this alien spends on Earth, the more time that he, I don't know if the alien has a gender, but it is narrated by a man, so I'm just gonna say he, he is getting more accustomed to humans and is starting to sympathize with them even though his goal is to gather information, see who has found out about the solving of this mathematical hypothesis and eliminate them. But he's like, I don't want to kill them, like they're good people and I don't know, it's an, it's really, it's a fun book. And it points out the hypocrisies and just the ridiculousness of the human experience, which I'm actually kind of enjoying, especially since this week hasn't been that great. So yeah, it's actually kind of just what I needed at this moment in time and the only complaint that I have is that, I don't know, it can't even really be a complaint. I think I would be annoyed by this book if it was even more philosophical than it is. It just, it reads a lot more simply than I thought it would. I don't know if that's a complaint yet, but that's just something that I've been noticing as I listen. It's it's a fun thing to listen to, but I'm not sure that at the end of this I'm going to come away with a profound experience after reading, which is definitely not a requisite of a reading experience. I had just hoped that if you're going to kind of handle these topics, that that would be something that's dressed, or at the very least, sorry my camera's a mess today, at the very least we would get just something a little bit deeper, if that makes sense. Right now every things very surface level and just pointing out the hypocrisies. I don't know, maybe maybe I'm just dumb and maybe I'm not thinking deeply enough. Perhaps that's my problem, but I'm enjoying this so far. I don't know that this is something that I would have picked up on my own, although I think it was on my Goodreads TBR before this video. Um, I'm enjoying it. I'll definitely update you guys when I'm finished. I don't know that I'm going to have a lot of thoughts as I read for this one just because it's not largely plot based. I mean, there's a plot, but the whole thing is kind of more about, you know, people are stupid and like... Anyway, I'll check in with you guys when I'm finished. Okay, so I finished, wow, 
I finished The Humans on my way home, on my commute. I listened to this entirely on audio. And okay, if I were to describe this book in one word, it would be unremarkable. I didn't hate it by any means. I don't think this was a terrible book, but I think what it set out to do was even a little bit too elementary for me as someone who doesn't really like highbrow literature. I don't know how to really get into this book without spoiling anything. I don't think there's much to spoil, but really this book is just about the human condition and about the hypocrisy and the idiocy of the human race. And it's done in a way that's supposed to make you sympathize with humans and feel grateful that we were on this planet. And I like that idea. I like that message. I think that's a really good message, but I don't think it really left me thinking in a thought provoking way. If you're going to try to set out to achieve that, and you don't, then I think the book as a whole is kind of unsuccessful. So I didn't hate this. I just wanted so much more. And that makes me sad because this is a book that I've heard a lot about. I've heard a lot of buzz about. Gabby obviously really likes it, but this just didn't really do it for me. I mean, to be honest, I'm probably going to unhaul this because I was just so underwhelmed and it's definitely not something that I'm going to read again. That leaves me in kind of a weird predicament because uh, if you didn't know, I film these clips kind of out of order because I like to read a lot of books all at once. The first book you guys know I loved and the third book that I'm going to talk about I absolutely adored as well. This one not so much. It's okay if we have some hit or miss but it just leaves me in a weird position when I'm trying to figure out if me and Gabby's tastes align. So humans not my favorite. Our tastes kind of don't align in this regard but since I know a lot of people like this since I liked what the idea behind the book is I don't think I can fault Gabby for that and I don't think that that means our tastes necessarily don't align. I just I didn't love this. I think I think that's enough. I don't think I need to psychoanalyze it. It's just, this wasn't for me. Okay, so I have started The Silent Patient, and I'm about two chapters in, I think, and I'm already really enjoying it. I think the writing style of this is really gonna work for me. I remember Kayla saying she really liked the writing style, and I can't remember exactly what Gabby said, but I know Gabby absolutely adored this. I think for me, writing style is pretty important in thrillers because it can either make or break my excitement and the page turning miss of the book, but what's happened so far is that we find out that this woman has killed her husband. There's pretty much no question of whether or not she's killed him and she is put away in a psychiatric institution and the person who's basically narrating the book and telling us what's happening is a forensic psychotherapist and he has accepted a job at the place that she is at the grove that's like the place where she's you know locked up and receiving treatment or whatever for her mental health i like it i like that already we've got some kind of fucked up morality i think it's going to be a really interesting read and i'm excited to get further into it i'll probably update you guys when i'm halfway through Okay, so last night I got 50% into The Silent Patient and I'm still really enjoying it. I think that both of the POVs are super, super strong. I never thought that I could sympathize with a male character in a thriller, <laughs> but I'm finding that I really like this guy, even though his reasons for trying to treat our silent patient are kind of unclear. I'm actually enjoying his POV. I think it's interesting. It's just as strong as the patient's journal entries from the past. I don't really know where things are going though. I think as time goes on, we're gonna get more from the patient in terms of learning what happened maybe, or learning why she killed her husband, if she did kill her husband. But I think I just need to keep reading and then get back to you guys when I'm done. Beautiful, show-stopping, stunning, amazing, five out of five fucking stars. I adore this book. I feel like I'm a little bit removed from it because I'm filming this clip like two or three days after finishing, but when I tell you the last hundred pages of this book were a wild fucking ride, I mean it. And I just, it was good. It was good stuff. I feel like thrillers are definitely something of personal taste and I don't think that I can really say definitively whether or not this is a book for you or whether this is something you're going to like, but me and Gabby, we obviously enjoyed this book. So the ending took a twist that I didn't see coming, even though I'm pretty sure I've listened or watched a spoiler filled review of this book. I was still taken aback and it's one of those thrillers that you actually want to go back and read because you want to understand the psychology of the characters more. You want to see if there are any things that you were missing before you got to the twist. It's exactly how I felt after I finished Gone Girl. I was like, oh shit. And I knew I wanted to reread it, which is actually why I purchased myself a copy of Gone Girl and why I will be keeping The Silent Patient on my shelves. It's rare that I am compelled to keep a thriller. Like I, I really enjoyed The Turn of the Key that I read for Lala's video, but I'm definitely going to unhaul it because it's not something that even, even though it did keep me thinking afterwards, it's not something that I'm going to revisit. Whereas The Silent Patient, I definitely will. And I don't know how much more I can say about this book <laughs> to not give spoilers away. It was really, really, really fucking good. And I know this is something that I talked about when I was talking about The Humans by Matt Haig, but it's so challenging because I really liked the first book, I really liked this book, and then The Humans just kind of eh. So I'm curious to see what happens for the next two books, which leads me into the book that I am already 50% of the way into. 
We Are the Ants by Sean David Hutchinson. This is a book that has been on my TBR shelf for a really long time. I've owned this book physically, I want to say for about two years now. I think it came out in 2015. I've had it since like 2017. So I'm glad that I'm getting around to this. But I will say it's not exactly what I expected. I knew that this was going to be about alien abduction a little bit and that this one guy is tasked with whether or not he is going to save the human race. And I heard that it was also really hard hitting and just dark. And while it is that, it's a different kind of dark than I was expecting. I was expecting graphic depictions of abuse and just a real sense of hopelessness. This book's a little bit more about grief because our main character, Henry, he is dealing with the loss of his long-term boyfriend and he, I don't know if he was, they hooked up. That's all I really know. Uh, he's also dealing with his family sort of falling apart, not having any friends, and it's just bleak, I would say. It's very bleak. It's not overly dark or overly graphic or anything like that, which again, I expected going into this. So I'm having to kind of adjust my expectations about this book a little bit. I'm not upset at the direction this book is taking but I think I'm having the same issue that I had when I was reading The Humans because this one while I think it is doing a more successful job at getting you to look at humanity it's a little bit more subtle and I kind of like that subtlety it's not doing anything that's making me really think it's not blowing my mind it's not it's not punching me in the face saying like bitch this is the best book you've ever read you know I don't anticipate this being five stars. Granted, I'm only 50% in. Not a ton has happened in the 50% except for Henry having an unhappy life. So curious to see where this goes. Also kind of scared because I only have one book left and I'm terrified of reading this and I don't have an audiobook. There is no audiobook for this book. So I'm gonna have to read this, I'll say by hand, with my own two eyes after I finish We Are the Ants. So I'm just in for a kind of depressing Saturday. <laughs> I'm excited to finally read these. These have been on my shelf a while. This has been on my Goodreads TBR for fucking forever. So I'll update you guys when I'm done with We Are the Ants and I'll let you know for sure if it's uh, good or not. Well, I'm glad that I finished this because now I can unhaul one of the books that has been on my shelves the longest. I really didn't fucking like this book like at all, not even a little bit. I'm not faulting Gabby or anyone that enjoys this book for enjoying it. I just don't understand why the fuck people do like it. I tried to ask someone who has read it what specifically about it they liked. They just said they liked that it was depressing, so that didn't really help me. Oh, I, 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 I'm at a loss. I really don't, I don't get it. And okay, to be fair, I also read another Sean David Hutchinson book before I read this one, and I didn't like that one either. I also gave that one two stars. Spoiler, I'm giving this one two stars. I don't think that he's a bad writer. He's just not a writer for me. The writing was very dry, bleak, and not hopeful. And I think this was very similar to The Humans. So if you're looking for a story that kind of talks about the human condition, whether the world is worth saving, etc. I think The Humans, in my opinion, does a better job at it. It's, I don't want to say objectively better. It's a, it's a lot less depressing. I just, I think it does a better job. This one idea is that you're supposed to understand how shitty Henry has it. It and understand that there's still a reason to live and you don't really get that message until very very far into the book there's not even like little hints of goodness throughout the book to kind of get you to want him to see it if that makes sense i just ooh. and again i tried i tried looking at goodreads reviews after i read it and you know just tried to understand what it was that people enjoyed because when i was done i was just left with a feeling of really this is what everybody is like fussing about and i wanted to understand more to kind of help form my own thoughts i do that a lot i don't know if you guys read reviews before you kind of tried to write your own, but this just was not for me. This is this is getting hard. This is a tough situation to be in. Really liked two, honestly loved, and are all-time favorites and favorites of the year. And then two of them I thought were just kind of lackluster. I think that's kind of par for the course for me and my attitudes towards science fiction and also books that try to talk about morality. So I guess it's nothing against Gabby's taste specifically. <laughs> These just aren't, aren't the kinds of stories that I connect with, I guess, is what I'm finding out. So I guess that's a good thing to find out. But I'm interested now because I'm starting in on All the Ugly and Wonderful Things by Bren Greenwood. I have a feeling I'm going to like this one. I have a feeling it's going to be really hard to get through. It's a very controversial read. Some people say it's a gratuitous. Once I get into it, I'll explain a little bit more about what this book is about if you didn't know, but it is kind of a controversial read. I'm surprised that Gabby enjoyed this one so much, knowing the kinds of other things that she enjoys, but I'm really, I'm, I'm interested to get into this one. So once I get a few chapters in, I'll update you guys and let you know what it's about. I am four chapters into All the Ugly and Wonderful Things by Brent Greenwood, and I'm already enjoying it. Hard to read about. It is going to be incredibly dark, I can already tell, but I'm really liking the way that this book is told. It is basically a story about this girl named Wavy who has been through a lot in her five years. I think this book really picks up when she is eight, from what I can tell by the description, but in the beginning, we're told about Wavy through the points of view of people who know her or have taken care of her at various stages of her life. In the first chapter, it's her aunt Amy who is taking care 
care of her for a few months and we get to see Wavy's behavior and then the most recent chapter was from Wavy's point of view and we get to kind of understand why she was behaving in the way that she was behaving and it's heartbreaking and it makes a lot of sense and I'm interested to see how this story unravels and what's happening. I heard that the main thing about this book that's controversial is the fact that there is a relationship between Wavy and an adult man that is problematic. I think some people see the relationship not as an endorsement of that sort of relationship and rather as an exploration of something different and traumatic and weird and some people see this as just gratuitous and in, like I said endorsing a pedophilic relationship so there's that. I'm interested to see where this goes. Already, like I said, I'm enjoying the way that the story is told. I like books that push the way that you think about things, that push the morality that you think you have, get you to kind of bend your beliefs. I don't think that after reading this I'm going to think, oh yeah, this, this totally made sense. I am interested to see because, like I said, this is just kind of more in my wheelhouse than some of the other books that I've read for this video. So I'll get back to you guys when I am about halfway done with this. Okay, so I finished All the Ugly and Wonderful Things by Brynn Greenwood and I was going to update you guys at 50% but I didn't have fully formed and coherent thoughts about the book. Not a lot happens plot-wise so I didn't have much to update you guys on but... <sighs> I don't want to say that I enjoyed this book because to imply that I enjoyed it means that I enjoyed and endorse all of the things that occurred in it and that's not necessarily the case. I definitely understand why people don't like this book because the underage one might say pedophilic relationship that happens is definitely not something that's condemned. I wouldn't say it's tacitly endorsed but it's definitely not condemned. It's hard because our main character has parents who deal and manufacture meth, <laughs> treat her like shit, don't just really don't care about her well-being and she has this older guy man he was in his 20s she was like 13 when their romantic relationship began obviously problematic but you also see all of the kind and fatherly things he does for her so it's hard to condemn the relationship entirely because you really want someone to be there to support her you also get this bad feeling at the sexual relationship that they engage in so this was hard <laughs> i appreciated the characterization and i like how hard it was to decide what characters i agreed with what i thought was wrong and right. I think this book definitely gets you to question your own morality and own idea of what's right. Those are the kinds of books that I like because with real world examples like these, I think it, it pushes your own morality more so than something like the humans or we are the ants that are trying to tell you kind of what to believe. This is sort of out there to get you to question your beliefs in a way that makes sense to you. I think I'm gonna give this book four stars. The only reason I would dock a star is because I just, I don't feel like a ton happened. The main thing about this book in my opinion was the romantic relationship. I don't think that that should have been the sole focus of this book. I also think that having this book told from multiple different points of view about our main character Wavy, while interesting to read about, I think also makes it harder to sympathize with her as a character and also harder for you to get inside her head and understand what she's thinking, which I think would have been helpful in a few different instances that would spoil the book, so I'm not gonna get into it. But this was definitely something that I probably would have picked up on my own. I think in this way, me and Gabby's taste definitely align. I'm very glad that I read this. I probably will be keeping this book. It's not a new favorite of mine, but it's definitely a book that is very much up my alley in the kind of problematic themes explored getting you to think etc. So so that leads me into my wrap up for this video. I had a really really fun time again reading another booktuber's favorite books, getting to explore someone different, someone who I haven't been watching as long I think was even more exciting and after reading these books I can definitely say that I think me and Gabby have even more similar tastes than me and Lala, especially with the adult romance that I absolutely adored that I got to read. So I'm gonna go through the books one by one, tell you guys what my star ratings are and we can compare it to Gabby's and I'll give kind of my final thoughts. So the first book that we read was Junkie by Hambria Hebert. I gave this book five stars. I adored it. I know Gabby gave it five stars as well. This is one of my favorite romances of the year. Definitely my favorite male-male romance that I read this year. So chef's kiss, fucking perfection. Loved this. The next book that I read and finished was The Humans by Matt Haig. I gave this book three stars. It wasn't an all-time favorite, but I didn't dislike it immensely. I, I liked the message. I thought it was objectively pretty good. So I give this book three stars. Gabby gave it five. The next book that I read was The Silent Patient by Alex Michaelides, and I gave this book five stars. This is my favorite thriller of the year. I adored this. Gabby gave it five 
five stars. I give it five stars. Love that. The next book that I read was We Are the Ants. I give this book two stars. Gabby gave it five stars. This was definitely my least favorite of the week and probably one of my least favorite books that I've read in a long time. So didn't love this. And then the last book I read was All the Ugly and Wonderful Things by Brent Greenwood. I gave this book four stars. Gabby gave it again five stars. So I think this I Read Vibe was different in the fact that I felt more passionately about each of the books. When I read all of Lala's faves, I definitely understood why they were faves. I had some that became some of my favorites, but I didn't feel a true passion behind any of the books, even if they became some of my all-time favorite books, if that makes any sense. Whereas when I read Gabby's faves, Junkie, I had such a visceral reaction to. I couldn't stop turning the page. Absolutely adored it. Same with The Silent Patient. And then with a book like We Are the Ants, I really did not like it. And just like a visceral reaction from that. So I, I like this. And I think this is going to make me want to pick up more of the books that Gabby likes. Also knowing some of the things that she likes that I don't like, I think I'm better equipped to listen to her um, recommendations, know which ones are going to work for me, and then go from there. So I had a really, really fun time filming this. If you guys haven't subscribed to Gabby's channel, you need to. I am so glad that I got to discover her through this video because I adore her stuff. Uh, we have very similar taste and yeah, I just had a really good time doing this. So in the comments down below, like always, please let me know which taste test video you'd like to see next. I already have the third one planned, but I'm always open for suggestions for any future videos that I do like this. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I love you so much and until next time.